Greetings. My name is Myra Moses and I am the Deputy Comptroller for the City of Memphis Accounts Payable Department. There are several forms you will need to complete the interactive component to this training. Type this link in the address bar of your internet browser. Now please pause the video and take a moment to print out the pages provided through the link. Now that you have your material, one of the most important goals of the Accounts Payable Department is to ensure that our customers are paid for their goods or services in a timely manner. To assist the various divisions in helping us reach that goal, we have provided a brief but detailed tutorial on how to properly submit supplier or vendor invoices for payment. This video is designed to be a guide that is easily accessible to you at any time. Now, let's get right into our training. We'll start with a few need to know facts. In doing business with the city, customers should be aware that invoices are net 30 day pay. The city of Memphis has 30 days from the invoice date to produce a payment for the customer. The mayor's current goal is to consistently have at least 85% of all invoices paid within 30 days citywide. So, Let's find out what we need to do to make that happen. The form you see before you is the official City of Memphis check request. This form is required for all payments made through the Accounts Payable Department. We have highlighted the fields that must be completed before submitting this form. Let's begin with the highlighted field in the top left corner of the form entitled BPA or Contract Number. When a payment exceeds the amount of $5,000, a purchase order or contract number is required in this field. If there is no PO or contract number available, a letter of justification for payment is required by the purchasing department. Please attach justification letter along with the invoice to the check request and submit to the chief purchasing officer. If a check request is submitted for $5,000 or more and there is no PO or contract number indicated and there is no justification letter included, the check request will be returned to the division for correction. The purpose of expenditure field should contain a very brief description of what the city is purchasing. A good rule of thumb to follow is to practice five words or less in this field. Let's now look at the supplier number and site field. Both the supplier and site numbers can be found in Oracle. The supplier number is the unique number assigned to each vendor in the Oracle database. If a supplier number is not found, a request to add a new supplier should be submitted by checking the new supplier setup box in the upper right corner of the form. A current year W-9 form must be obtained from the vendor and attached to the check request as supporting documentation before submitting to the purchasing department for setup. The site is the term used for the remit to address and must match the address indicated on the supplier's invoice. The payee and address fields should match the information on the customer's invoice as well. If the address on the invoice differs from the address in the Oracle database, a request to add a new site should be indicated by checking the New Remittance Address checkbox in the upper right corner of the form. The Requester field should be the name of the person that completes the check request. Please indicate the date as well. If a supervisor or manager must approve the check request, they should sign or initial here in the alternate approver field. Chiefs, directors, or their authorized signatories only must sign in the approval field. Accounts payable should have signatures on file of those authorized to sign in this field. The invoice number and invoice date fields must match the same information supplied on the vendor's paper invoice. The fund number, project or service center number, and account number should all coincide with the paying division, department, and account coding. For all grant or project-related payments, an expenditure type 
account number and award number is required. The amount of the invoice should be indicated in the gross amount field. If a discount is offered, it should be placed in the discount amount field, and the total will populate in the net amount field. Please be sure to periodically check the formula supplied in the totals field. The space below the green line at the bottom of this form is reserved for the accounts payable department's use. You are now viewing the same form without the highlights. The City of Memphis also offers an automated clearinghouse payment option. This is called an ACH or electronic form of payment. This means payment to our vendors is deposited directly into the customer's bank account. The benefit to the customer using this type of payment is convenience. The document before you is a partial listing of the vendors who have opted in for ACH payments. This listing can be obtained from your division's finance office. If a vendor appears on this listing, the electronic check request should be used when submitting invoices for payment. As you can see, the difference in this check request and the prior check request is simply the word electronic. It is very important that the electronic check request is used when paying vendors that have requested this option for payment. So we encourage you to revisit the ACH participant listing frequently as the listing is updated weekly. Now let's take about 20 minutes to create check requests for submission. Please use the invoices pages 5 through 9 and the blank check request forms that were printed at the beginning of this tutorial to complete this exercise. You may now pause the video. Okay, we're back. Let's see how well you did. The results for the invoice labeled page 5 are as follows. The first thing that should stand out is that this invoice belongs to a vendor that has requested the ACH form of payment. Therefore, the correct check request would be the electronic check request. Remember to check the ACH participant listing frequently for updates. Next, because the payment is under $5,000, no contract number or justification letter is needed. But just to get into the practice of making sure that you complete all required fields, we suggest placing NA in the contract number field. Now NA is not required. For the purpose of expenditure, we indicated labor services for M. Dawson. There is no wrong answer for this field, so whatever you choose to place here is more than likely sufficient. The supplier number we're looking for is 81968. Because this is an ACH payment, the site name should be SP for special pay. The payee is Nemark Professional Services. The remittance address, according to the printed invoice, is PO Box 343366, Memphis, Tennessee 38184. Because I am the employee that completed this form, my name is printed on the name of requester line and I've dated the form. If there is a supervisor or manager that should approve the payment before it reaches the chief or director level, they should sign or initial here. Finally, the signature that is required by accounts payable, the chief, director, or authorized signatory should be placed here. Moving along, the invoice number is 2810-244. The invoice date is April 29, 2019. The account distribution should always indicate a fund number, a project or service center number, and an account number. The amount of the invoice is $810. So, how did you do? Okay, let's move to the results for the invoice labeled page six. An electronic check request was used because the supplier or vendor is listed as an ACH participant. No contract number is required. 
for the purpose of expenditure, utilities for April 2019 was indicated. The supplier number is 53331 with SP2 as the site name. Memphis Light Gas and Water is the payee and the address indicated on the remittance is P.O. Box 388, Memphis, Tennessee, 38145. Once again, I am the requester and Chief Ford has approved this payment. We used the account number listed on the invoice as the invoice number. The invoice date is May 3rd, 2019 and a fund number, service center, and account number are indicated in the proper fields. The amount of the invoice is $845.90. I know you're doing very well on these exercises. Let's move to the results for the invoice labeled page five. Because this is a payment exceeding $5,000, a contract number is required in this field. The supplier number is 93904 with R5 as the site name. Janitorial services for MPD is what is indicated in the purpose of expenditure. We are paying SKB facilities and maintenance and their remittance address is 3571 Winchester Road, Memphis, Tennessee 38118. I am the requester and Chief Ford has approved this payment. The invoice number is 5259, dated April 16th, 2019. A fund number, service center number, and account number are indicated in the proper fields, and the amount of the invoice is $32,624.55. The results for the invoice labeled page eight. The supplier number is 55264 with a site name of R4. The remit to address is P.O. Box 720, Batesville, Mississippi, 38606. Vehicle maintenance is indicated as the purpose of expenditure. I am the requester and Chief Ford has approved this payment. The invoice number is I. 10441-15517 and the invoice date is December 5th, 2018. A fund number, service center number, and account number are indicated in the proper fields and the amount of this invoice is $52.45. Finally, for the results of the invoice labeled page nine, the paperwork submitted is not an invoice. The City of Memphis does not pay from work orders, statements, or letters. We will only pay from an official invoice. The final portion of this video will show you the remaining check request options. We've gone over the regular and electronic check request, and there are a few more that you should be aware of. The retainage check request is used only for contracted construction projects that involve escrow accounts. The travel check request is used for registration and hotel fees for out-of-town employee travel. It is also used when reimbursing non-employee travel. Finally, the petty cash check request is used for employees who are custodians of their division or department's petty cash. We hope you've enjoyed our training video and that you were able to learn a few things about the check request process. This video is part one of a series of videos that will navigate you through the entire payables process, which will include how to find supplier, payment, and contract information, as well as three-way matching procedures. Thank you for watching the Accounts Payable How to Properly Submit an Invoice for Payment. Until next time.